Hi everyone, my name is Maeve London. I'm an occupational therapist here at Beerman ABA. I hope this video finds you and your family well. We miss all of our kids here at Beerman, but I'm hoping uh, to show you some activities today that you can do with your kids that are both uh, fun and have really great therapeutic value. So what I want to focus on today is hand strengthening. I've done a few videos that have sort of touched on hand strengthening, so I'll do a quick review of those activities that are relevant, but I won't kind of belabor the point there. Um, and then I'll show you a couple things that you can do to really target those muscles. Um, when we talk about hand strengthening, what we're really talking about are the muscles in your forearm, because they're responsible for flexion of your fingers. We're talking about the muscles um, on the back of your forearm, because they're responsible for extending your fingers. And then we have what we call intrinsic hand muscles, that are muscles actually within the hand itself that give you some really great power and grip. So we really want to be working on all of those muscles when we're working on hand strengthening, but particularly those flexion ones. Um, so some options that I've touched on in the past are anything with a turkey baster, because um, what we're really looking for is that repetitive squeezing, and a turkey baster provides great opportunities to work on that. Um, something that I've mentioned in the past is using a turkey baster to suck up liquid from a container and then put it into another one. You can also grab some pom-poms and use the air from the turkey baster to shoot the pom-poms across the table. Um, really, as long as they're squeezing away, um, something as simple as a turkey baster can really provide a lot of opportunities to work on hand strengthening. Uh, another thing that I've touched on in the past are spray bottles because I love them. Spray bottles are really, really great for hand strengthening because they do that really great repetitive motion. Um, and kids will typically, if they get their hands on one of these, want to keep playing with it until that water is gone. So you're getting that mass practice squeezing motion, which is so wonderful. Um, in a past video, I talked about creating a target and having the kids shoot the target. Um, today, I also just want to give you some other options for a spray bottle. Uh, the first of which is a car wash. Um, so you grab maybe their favorite toys, their favorite cars, uh, it can also be animals, and uh, you just line them up and make sure they get nice and clean. What's great about this is you can embed some really great, um, more academic goals, like um, does the tiger live on land or in the ocean? And is the Jeep um, a vehicle or a type of food? You can kind of make sure you're talking about the toys and engaging with them. You can also use directionals, which is great. Shoot the car on the right, shoot the car on the left. So can you go under, can you go over, get some prepositions in there, things like that. So really, um, while they're continually working on that hand strengthening, squeezing that bottle over and over again, you're also getting an opportunity to embed some other types of play, uh, get imaginative, and then use some, sneak some academic goals in there, um, colors, shapes, sizes, things like that. Um, so again, I love this. This is a really great tool for hand strengthening, um, and I highly encourage you, you give it a go. Uh, the next thing I would like to show you is uh, my friend here, Tennis Ball Bob. So I've just cut a little smile into Tennis Ball Bob and put some googly eyes on, and um, what you do is you put your hands just like this, and you squeeze to open up his mouth. And what I like to do with Tennis Ball Bob, you can do some play and some talking and things like that. Um, but I like to work a lot with feeding with ten Tennis Ball Bob. So you have your child hold on to the tennis ball and encourage them to squeeze to open his mouth. And then um, I just went around the clinic and found things that were small enough to fit. So pom-poms, delicious. Um, you can find some toy fruit or some toy um, vegetables. Toss those in there. Um, really anything you can find. Um, to have him munch on. And what I like to do is, um, if I have kids who maybe have a li limited food repertoire, I also like to take the opportunity to talk about food and maybe trial some things um, that they might be feeling a little nervous or hesitant to engage with. So um, always embedded in play, always relaxed. I'm not asking them to eat anything. I'm not even asking them to touch it if they don't want to, but if we can get the opportunity to, wonderful. So maybe they love apples, but they're not sure how they feel about carrots, okay? So I might say, oh, Tennis Ball Bob is gonna try one carrot. He's never tried it before. Let's give it a go. Have him try it, nom, 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 nom. He loves it, delicious, that's awesome. And now he gets to eat 10 apples. And I really just load up on the apples. Um, and the whole time, Tennis Ball Bob's having a great time. I'm having a great time. I'm modeling enthusiasm and relaxation and engagement. And if we can get um, 
our child to maybe pick up a, a fruit they haven't touched before or to even just open that mouth and have tennis ball bob accept that food that can be a really great model and kind of a bridge from um, asking them to do that um, it's not so threatening when it's just tennis ball bob so he's a great guy for both hand strengthening and modeling some of that feeding therapy if that is something that um, is a priority for you and the last thing I'd love to show you is what I call slime lake so this is TheraPutty. TheraPutty is a really wonderful tool uh, for hand strengthening. It comes in graded strengths, so um, extra soft all the way up to hard, which can get actually quite difficult to pull. Um, so it's really, really good because you can do a number of things with it, um, and it's an awesome way to target hand strength. So usually what I do is I pretend that the dinosaurs have, uh, are on their way to a dinosaur party, and oh no, they fell in Slime Lake, and they need your help to get out. I always have a one bigger toy that's easy to extract because I want my kids to have success with this activity right away. Uh, if it's too difficult, they might back off, they might be hesitant, they don't wanna engage quite so fully, but if they really get success right away, oh my goodness, we already have one dinosaur out, wonderful, they're more likely to dive back in and try again with the more difficult ones. So from there, I usually leave a head or a tail sticking out, um, and then I'm gonna encourage them to use that pincer grasp and pull, 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 pull. Oh my goodness, he's almost free. We can pull by his head, by his tail. You can do some body identification there. Where's his foot, things like that. Um, and what's great is sometimes it can be hard to target using a pincer grasp and working on strength at the same time. And TheraPutty and an activity like that allows you to do that. Um, or I can have them use some what we call bilateral coordination. That means we're asking kids to use both their hands at the same time to complete a task. So gripping onto the lake with both sides and pulling apart until, wow, we got that dinosaur free, amazing. And um, that can be a really lovely way of, uh, again, we're embedding these things in play. We don't want it to feel like work, um, but the whole time we're really engaging those key compartments of the forearm and the hand to be pulling, gripping, grasping, squeezing over and over and over again until we're building up those muscles that we want to focus on. So uh, I hope you found this useful. These are just three quick and hopefully easy ways for you to work on hand strengthening if that is something um, that you would like your kid to be focusing on. And I hope you enjoy and have fun.